Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. A bunch of nations over the last few years have had some gaps in their tech trees filled, which, to be honest, were needed. Uh, the SBAA mid-tiers have got huge buffs for most of the nations. Germany generally was alright already, but they did get a few lower tier stuff. The USSR, of course, got the BTRZD and also the M53. And then also, Britain got the Istavark and, of course, the Bosvark. The sub just came in as well for Japan and also the AMX-10, I believe it is, for France as well. A bunch of these nations, uh, plus stuff like the R3, the Leopard 4070, you can see that the pattern continues, because guess what? CAS has been pretty dominant for the longest time in uh, War Thunder, so they're trying to bring in more and more vehicles to help it out, and it's working slowly but surely. Even if you do get one for one traded, at least you're able to do something in the miasma with uh, the different vehicles. Now, there is one nation which has just kind of been forgotten about, and it's kind of a surprise because it's America. America has a huge gap when it comes to its SBAA, and even though they have some of the best cast elements in the game, it isn't always as easy to be able to get into them to defend yourself against the hordes that come in at mid tiers. So I thought what we would do in this video is just have a look at some of the options and have a look at some of the things that could come into the game to be able to help out America. I know people look at the skink, which obviously was added to Britain, and would say, well, they could add it to America, but I've got to tell you, there's a ton of options that they can throw in at the mid-tiers. We're not going to look at high-tier stuff, literally just the mid-tiers, just to show you how many vehicles are on offer. So the first vehicle that is available is the T69 MGMC. Now this is basically the same firepower of an M16, but instead mounted on a Greyhound chassis. We have the Greyhound in the game, um, it is in two separate tech trees, and of course we have the quad 50 cal mount as well, so why not marry them together to create a platform which wouldn't be too different from the M16, but would have a little bit more mobility around the battlefield, meaning that you could get to areas to be able to attack aircraft a little bit easier. So one of the common things you'll see when it comes to a lot of these AAs is they use many different parts from other vehicles to try and, you know, save costs. So for example, a lot of them will use like older chassis um, to try and make it so you don't have to make a fully new chassis uh, to try and speed up the process and of course use vehicles that may have become obsolete. One of them is the T85E1 MGMC. Uh, this is uh, based on the Stuart chassis uh, and also has access to a quad 20 millimeter mount. Uh, so basically four 20 millimeters instead of the twin 40 millimeters, which was more likely when it came to this uh, mount uh, to be seen. So it would be incredibly similar to something like the M19 instead of having the 40s though, it would just have access to the quad 20s. So, so far we've seen the Greyhound chassis and the Stuart chassis. It's now time for the Chaffee chassis to be used in the T-77. Now, this is probably the most recognizable one that uh, people have talked about. Uh, it's a Chaffee with a closed turret which has access to 650 cals in it, uh, which uh, definitely sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, usually when it comes to America, um, they are definitely uh, very much portrayed in the way of just having a ton of guns and throwing everything together, and that's what this machine is. Uh, imagine if you just put a bunch of guns on a chaffee and said, well, there you go, it's time to have a bit of fun. One of the chassis that you may have thought may have been exempt from this role because of its humongous size is the M3 Lees, and you'd be wrong. <laughs> the T36 GMC was built, and basically they took a, a good old M3 Lee hull, and then they added a 40mm to it uh, with a very dodgy turret. Uh, on it. So uh, the actual turret itself is a complex cast turret uh, on the M3 medium tank chassis and it just looks completely ridiculous and you can kind of tell why it didn't go into service. The T-68 SBAG exists as well and this is a half track but it has access to two 40mm in a very weird configuration. 
I would have loved to see the kickback on this thing. I would I would really enjoy trying to see a video of this thing because that hole right there, uh, especially well the the actual chassis of uh, the half track has been just stripped out. There's hardly any weight on it at all probably because they were worried about nuking the suspension with the ridiculous gun arm that's on this thing. But it just seems like a complete crazy idea just because of the amount of force that many of these areas are going to have to take. But at the end of the day, it was built and it did exist. So there you go. It could be put in the tech tree. The Sherman chassis was also used as one uh, to be able to mount some kind of AA on it. The T-52 was the result. You get a 40mm Bofors and then 250 cals on this vehicle in an interesting turret configuration once again, with the 40mm in the centre and then 250 cals on the side of the ball. This one is, of course, one which would make probably the most sense since it's uh, the closest to things like the Skink, uh, but then again, it is uh, one which is also probably a little bit wonky to bring in. Technically, a lot of these vehicles, we already have many of their components in the game, so I don't know how hard it would be to be able to put them together, but hopefully we see them in the future. The last vehicle, which would actually be really cool, is the T-100. Uh, this was another one, uh, which was based on a vehicle which uh, you probably know, uh, the T-41 light tank. Now, if you don't know what the T-41 is, basically the prototype to the Bulldog, uh, which we have in various uh, areas of the game. This one had access to a turret, which had access to some pretty interesting guns, some 60 caliber machine guns. So not 50 cal, 60 cal. Now, uh, it had four of them, uh, which is pretty cool. The problem with the vehicle, though, is the guns didn't work very well. So it was a new and innovative design, and it just didn't end up working. So it kind of sucks, uh, but also could be added. These are all the vehicles that they could put into the game in the mid-tiers of America if they wanted to. And uh, I'm just kind of waiting for them. You know, a bunch of other nations, as I said, have been put into uh, great areas uh, because of their AAs. Now it's time for America to have its turn finally. As always, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Brendan Quinn, Vilnaeus, Character Fuel, Juan the Panda, Carrion Crow, Gus Irenicus, Pyman, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, Bereen, Peter Grayling, Alan Hacker, Sam Alslan, Uncle Bean, and Derek R., and also LaFouche for supporting the channel.